Hi, it's Sandy Alnock here for Ellen Hudson, and I bring you another watercolor tip. Last week I promised you we'd talk about feathering. Feathering is out at the edge of your image, trying to make it go to white or to a light color, and it's one of those really beautiful things that watercolor can do, and it's a great way to finish off an image. Now I want to show you a few things, a few different techniques and different issues that I've come up with myself over time. And here I've mixed up some paint, but I've got a lot of water in my brush. You can see the water by when I touch the paint. There's a ton of water, so it's pushing water out into the paint. And I'm basically getting a very, very light haze of green in here. What I was planning on doing was picking up water on, or picking up color on the tip of my brush every time I dipped it in, but it just pushed water out into the paint. So now I've, I've dipped my brush into the paint itself to add more to my palette. And now I'm going to add it into this wet area. Just gonna go right up to the edge of the image. And I realized afterward, unfortunately, that I painted over the little birdie's uh, little wing. <laughs> He's got a little green wing there, but I was in my head assuming that that was part of something else like the phone cord. So beg my pardon, little birdie, you've got a little green wing. You can see I'm laying the brush down on its side because I still have all that water within the brush, in the fat part of the brush. So when I lay it down on its side and I only have pigment on the tip of the brush, it gives me that natural feathering out to the edge. So you can see I'm just laying the brush down kind of on its side and squishing that water out so that I, I pour the water out on the edge and then leave the pigment just there on the inside right next to the image itself. So you can also dab off a little bit with paper towels based on you know how soft you want it and that sort of thing. And I'm gonna go in one more time and add a few more dots in there because I wanted a little deeper color right in there in the middle so you can add to it and then re-soften the edges by laying that brush down and making a soft edge all the way around it. And here I'm adding just a little bit more water around the whole thing and then when it dries, it'll give it a really soft look. So you need to do that with super clean water. I like to keep a couple jars of water by my side while I'm working so that I always have one that's super clean because it's real easy for your watercolor to get a tint of another color. Now here's a piece that I colored earlier. I painted with lapis lazuli, which is a very non-staining color. It's one of the most non-staining ones that there is. You can see I painted right over it and dabbed it off and immediately it went completely white. So you could soften out the image and get that vignette look just by painting a square of it and then erasing that color with water going all around. So I was debating whether I wanted to make a soft edge out to the side like that or if I just wanted to dab it off. Look at that, it just comes completely off when it's a very low or non-staining color. So if you're using the Daniel Smith watercolors, you can look at the numbers on the chart and find out, and they're also on the tubes, what level of staining it is. And then I can also move this paint. This is just moving the paint that's already there. I haven't added anything extra from my palette. And I can just move it around so I get a very soft look on the right hand side of the little picture and not have to, you know, I decided I didn't want to have the whole thing vignette out. And then of course there is the graduated wash which will also get your color to go out to white. I will uh, link you in the description down below to the graduated wash lesson that we did a few weeks ago so that you can remember how to do that, but you just wanna continually put cleaner and cleaner water out on the edge so it draws all that color from the, uh, from the darker area into the lighter and gets lighter and lighter. So here's your pinnable graphic that is over on the blog. You can go over and grab this Stick it on your Pinterest board with all your watercolor tips and add to your little collection of swatch sheets as well. So if you're doing the swatches along with me, there's a free downloadable on the blog to help you with that. And I will see you guys next week. Thank you so much for joining me again. Bye-bye.